Good morning, everyone. The first hymn I'm going to be singing this morning is called Keep on the Sunny Side. There's a dark and a troubled side of life. There's a bright, there's a sunny side too. Though we meet with a darkness and strife, the sunny side we also may view. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten side of life. The storm and its fury broke today, crushing hopes that we cherish so dear. Clouds and storms will in time pass away. The sun again will shine bright and clear. On the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. It will help us every day. It will brighten all the way if we keep on the sunny side of life. Let us greet with a song of hope each day. The moment be cloudy or fair, let us trust in our Savior always, who keepeth everyone in his care. Keep on the sunny side, always on the sunny side. Keep on the sunny side of life. Help us every day, it will brighten all the way if we keep on the sunny side of life. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our morning prayer here at Holy Innocence in Paradise. And I am doubly blessed this morning because I have with me Mr. Brad Clark and Mr. George Shepherd. And of course, Natasha is doing music again live, so I'm, I'm triply blessed. Uh, just a quick announcement before we start. Uh, this week, we were able to deliver our blessing bags to the gathering place. Uh, they are accepting donations again. And uh, I just wanted to spread the word that they're still looking for summer clothing, adult summer clothing only, and uh, toiletry items. Uh, so any personal hygiene items, socks, washcloths, things like that. Uh, so if anybody is still holding on to blessing bags that they haven't brought to the church, you can let me know. Uh, or if you have anything around your house that you'd like to donate, uh, as long as it's summer clothing or toiletries, uh, you could let me know as well. And uh, if you'd like to drop it off yourself, their new drop-off location is on 42 Burns Road at the Lantern Building. Uh, and it might be a good idea to call ahead of time because they're, they're fairly crowded and they're working out of a very small space right now. Uh, so you can certainly let me know if you have anything. And we'll just take a moment to quiet ourselves before we begin. We do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth shall, shall proclaim, proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, o Lord make, make haste, haste to help us. And together, glory, glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, now and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your true and living bread, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The proper psalm for this morning's service is Psalm 17, verses 1 to 7 and verse 16. And the refrain will be, Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior, Savior of, of those, those who, who take, take refuge, refuge at, at your, your right, right hand. hand. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior, of those who take refuge at your right hand. Weigh my heart, summon me by night, melt me down. You will find no impurity in me. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior, of those who take refuge at your right hand. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. Show me, Show me your, your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior, of those who take refuge at your right hand. My footsteps hold fast to the ways of your law. In your paths my feet shall not stumble. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior, of those who take refuge at your right hand. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show, Show me, me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior, of those who take refuge at your, your right, right hand, hand. From those who rise up against them. But by my vindication, I shall see your face when I awake. I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. Show, Show me your, your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior, of those who take refuge at your right hand. Yeah. The reading from this morning, the reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. 
When he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today's gospel is one that seems to never disappoint me. Every time I read it, it offers something new and fresh that I hadn't noticed before. You might say, as far as scripture goes, this is one of my favorites, and one that has without a doubt impacted my own ministry. This week, as I mentioned earlier, I had the privilege of dropping off our blessing bags to the gathering place. My small SUV was packed to the roof with huge bags full of toiletries, socks, washcloths, and other essential items. Along with providing those in need with basic care, the gathering place provides two meals a day, seven days a week, to any number of their over 2,000 guests. They realize and see firsthand the problem of physical hunger. To take a quote from their website, there are over 2,000 people in St. John's living on the streets or in hostile boarding houses. They're struggling with any number of demons, hunger, abuse, mental illness, physical disabilities, and addictions. They're barely surviving from day to day. Four years ago, full of the best of intentions, I started volunteering at a local soup kitchen, not too far from the gathering place, with many of our guests overlapping. Every Saturday at 4.30, we would get ready for the crowds that would come through our doors for a full hot meal, complete with dessert, tea, and coffee, and we'd feed about 120 people each week. It was busy, intense, and often challenging, but so worth it. Every Friday night, which was my favorite night, we would open our doors from 7.30 till 10.30 and welcome 40 or 50 guests, feeding them with homemade mac and cheese, homemade goulash, or my personal favorite, hot dogs and fries. Always followed by a steady supply of tea, coffee, hot chocolate, sweets, and good conversation. At first, I'll admit, I was eager as a new seminary student to share with these people the news of the gospel. After all, it's not just good news, it's life-changing news. But I quickly began to realize that there was a far greater hunger among some of these guests, a hunger for food, the basic necessity of life that so many of us take for granted. After a guest said to me one Friday evening, thank you, this is the only bite I've had to eat today. I shifted gears from wanting to feed them spiritually to wanting desperately to look after their physical needs as well. I prayed that by meeting their basic needs with compassion and humility, I would be an example of the gospel and not just a preacher of it. Gradually, over the span of my almost three years there, many beautiful friendships formed from the simple action of feeding others. That Friday night volunteer activity will forever remind me of today's gospel for so many reasons. Jesus in our gospel today is attempting to find some quiet time and some rest 
after hearing the news of John the Baptist's death. So he gets into a boat. Now the boat is visible to the crowds on the shore, and they begin to gather and wait for him. He could have turned the crowds away that day, maybe even said he needed a personal day. But instead, he begins to teach them and talk to them, despite his own fatigue. He feeds them spiritually. As the evening unfolds, the disciples become aware of an impending problem. They realize the crowds will soon grow hungry and suggest that Jesus turn them away, sending them off to find their own food in the nearby village. But we all know that isn't how Jesus works. Jesus says to his disciples, they need not go away, you give them something to eat. To which they replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Five loaves, two fish, and 5,000 plus people. Just doesn't seem possible, does it? There were many a Friday night when we surpassed our usual number of guests and we started to run out of food very quickly. Down to our last dozen cookies, we'd start to split them in two just to stretch them a little bit further. When all of a sudden, in would walk a volunteer with dozens of donuts from Tim Hortons. Or some other volunteer would say, hey guys, I found frozen cookies in the freezer. Somehow, some way, there was always enough. And not just enough, but more than enough. Just as the five loaves and two fish were more than enough that day. Today's gospel seems to also teach us valuable lessons about abundance and thankfulness. And above all, discipleship. About looking after each other and feeding one another by whatever means necessary. Fearing that the measly five loaves and two fish wouldn't even come close to satisfying the large crowd, the disciples were eager to dismiss the crowd, to send them off. But Jesus used his disciples to feed his people. Instead of saying, I will feed them, he tells the disciples, you do it. They were the ones who took the food, distributed the food, and gathered the extras. Jesus uses our small, seemingly insufficient offerings and turns them into abundant blessings to be shared among all his people. He says to each and every one of us, you do it. This is discipleship. Jesus demonstrates what I like to think of as a recipe for abundance in this miracle as well. He takes the loaves and fish, looks upwards to the Father, gives thanks, blesses them, breaks them, and gives them to his disciples. Sounds a lot like Eucharist, doesn't it? But that's a sermon for another time. What happens next is the miracle of God's abundance when we willingly offer what we have, even if we feel it's not enough. The crowd ate, and a surplus of 12 baskets of leftovers were collected. That's certainly abundance. Jesus knew the importance of feeding people, both spiritually and physically, and in his compassion and love, he used the disciples, the offerings they presented, to do just that. Jesus uses us to feed his followers as well. He uses each and every one of us. Every little gift and talent that we have to offer is sufficient enough if we offer it with a heart of thanksgiving and expectation that God will turn it into something abundant. But sometimes, as the disciples did, we want to take the easy way out by saying, I don't have anything to offer, or what I have isn't useful, and we choose to turn people away. We think that we couldn't possibly make a difference, but we can. To use a quote from Mother Teresa, when a poor person dies of hunger, it has not happened because God has not taken care of them. It has happened because we did not give them what they needed. This may sound like a lot of responsibility on our part, but so is being a disciple of Christ. Jesus demonstrates in the feeding of the 5,000 that we are called to care for others. 
So today I'd like for each of us to stop and ask ourselves the question, who have I fed today? May God meet our humble offerings with his abundant blessings. Amen. Hi everyone, the next song I'm going to be singing is called Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Let us confess our faith as we say together. I believe, I believe in God, God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only, only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Merciful God, you fed your followers with food for both their spiritual, spiritual and physical needs. Feed us with your word and your spirit so that we may in turn feed others who hunger for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Help us to become more aware of and more thankful for the gifts you have given us. Help us to realize that these gifts are meant to be shared among all your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guide us in our perceptions of abundance, realizing that even in times when we believe we have little to offer, you are able to take what we offer and work it into something amazing. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Grant rest and peace to all who are tired in body, mind, and spirit. Renew and refresh them and allow them to cast all of their cares upon you and to trust in your perfect ways. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our church, the family of holy innocents. 
that you will lead them into the uncertain future full of hope and in what lies ahead and full of faith to endure the journey whenever it may take us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask this all through your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come. Your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The last hymn I'm going to be doing is Put Your Hand in the Hand. Put your hand in the hand of a man who still the water. Put your hand in the hand of a man who calmed the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others. about the part where the carpenter cleared the temple for the buyers and the sellers were no different fellers than what i profess to be and it causes me pain to know we're not the people we should be put your hand in the hand of a man who still the water put your hand in the hand of a man who calmed the sea yourself and you can look at others differently by putting your hand in the hand 